This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, open in our hearts and minds and make this a different space. Show us a different time. Make this be a place in which your presence embraces all in our lives, all in our world, and shows us a way forward towards your light. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. I had a whole plan for my children's talk this morning. And then, like Reverend Gary said, we had our church council retreat on Friday and Saturday. You can see most of the people that we were with. Mrs. Benny was there, Mr. Parker was there, Mrs. Lewis was there. There was a lot of us there. Rachel was there with us. And we were talking about the things that our church is already doing, the things that we're doing really well, the things we want to work on a little bit more, and how we could keep moving forward. And so I had to get rid of my children's talk that I had planned with water and bowls and stuff like that. So we'll save that one for another time. Because the things that we were talking about yesterday really sat with me. They were really in my head yesterday afternoon when we were done. They were on my heart. And I thought, I want to get started today on the things that we were talking about yesterday. So one of the things we were talking about is how we don't really know each other. Like, I'm really blessed because I get to know all of you. And I get to know the kids in our youth group. And I get to know their parents and families because those are the people that I see a lot more at church. And a lot of people may know who I am, and they know who my family is, but we don't really know each other. We don't chit-chat with each other a whole lot. And I was thinking about all of the people that come, and I'm looking out now. Can you look out there and just wave? A lot of those people, I don't know their names. And that's a little embarrassing. I've been coming here for four years now, and there's a lot of people, I don't even know their names. And I'm a little embarrassed to say that, but I'm going to work on that because I want to get to know everybody. I want to get to build relationships with my church family so that I can be a stronger member here at our church, so that we can be stronger together, so that we can go out into our community. That's what we talked about a lot yesterday, too, was getting out into our community more as a group. So I thought maybe you guys could help me with this this morning just a little bit about getting to know people, okay? So I thought maybe, uh, first let me ask this, who would be willing to go out there or over there and ask somebody they don't know a question? I have the questions written down, so you don't have to come up with a question. You would just go and ask them a question. Would anybody want to do that? <laughs> oh! takers. All right. So I'm going to give one to Mia and I'll give one to Zach. So this is Mia Kinch, if you don't know who she is. And this is Zach Kinch, if you don't know who he is. And then Miss Rachel Halpern said that she would do one as well. So you're going to take, oh, and now audience participation, I need you guys, if you would be willing to answer a question to raise your hand so that these kids know who they can go to. Oh, I see a hand up way in the back. Now remember, they have to ask somebody they don't know. So if they walk by you, don't be offended. It's because they already know you and they want to get to know somebody new. Okay? Who wants to go first? And I'll walk out there with you so you don't have to walk out there by yourself. You want to go first, Zach? Okay, if you guys could raise your hands. Zach, pick somebody you don't know and I'll go out there with you. I see lots of hands up. Great. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Who are we going to, Zach? Do, 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 do. Okay. Okay, so first, Zach, if you could ask her her name, and then you can ask her her question. What's your name? My name is Grandma Susan Klein. What is your favorite Bible story or verse? I like the story of Noah's Ark. Great. So Zach just met somebody new and learned something about her. Thank you, Grandma. All right, who wants to go next? All right, come on, Miss Mia. 
All right, let's see those hands. Pick somebody you don't know, okay, Mia? What's your name? Steve Conkle. What was the best thing about your week? Oh, probably going on the retreat with everybody. <laughs> yours, was, yours was a two-parter, sorry. Uh, what was the worst thing? <laughs> <laughs> going on the retreat? <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Steve. All right, Rachel, do you need me to go with you or do you want to go? Okay. Oh, Rachel's going to take a friend. Who wants to go with Rachel? Charlotte, do you want to walk with Rachel? Clarissa, I'll do one with you. How about that? No? Okay, that's fine. All right. Oh. One more time, please. And... Okay. Charlotte is four years old. When you were her age, what was your favorite food? Oh, and what's your name? I'm sorry, I forgot the first question. Ginger. Um, peanut butter? <laughs> Yum. Thank you, Ginger. All right, so that was pretty easy, right? We're in a really safe place. These are people are all our church family. So I'm going to make it my assignment to get to know people a little bit better each week, to start knowing names, and to get to know a little bit about themselves. Do you guys think that we can do that? Maybe meet one new person a week? What do you think? Yeah? I think so too. All right, so we're going to close with prayer, and then we'll go off to Sunday school for our Dr. Seuss lesson. Dear God, we're so grateful for our church family. We're grateful that we have this time together and ask that you would be with us and bless us as we move forward to strengthen our relationships, our bonds, and our love for you so that we can go out into our community and our world and be doers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. The reading today tells us about Jesus and the disciples in a boat on stormy seas. It's a good example of why these stories have been told for 2,000 years. Because we've all been in stormy seas, and still Jesus speaks to this. From Mark chapter 4. After Jesus had been teaching all day, when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats followed. Gale force winds arose, and waves crashed against the boat, so that the boat was filling with water. But Jesus was in the rear of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. They woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? He roused and gave orders to the wind, and he said to the lake, Silence, be still. The wind settled down, and there was a great calm. Jesus then turned to them and said, Why are you frightened? Don't you have faith yet? Overcome with awe, they said to each other, Who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen.
thanks to uh, my sister, uh, Reverend Anna Mulford, over in Oxnard St. Paul's Church for finding this beautiful story. When a man stopped, a man stopped at a quick stop store, a convenience store, to get a newspaper. He noticed that the man behind the counter had tears in his eyes and was looking out the window, and so he asked what was going on. And the storekeeper said, do you see that bus bench right over there? There's a woman who comes there every day around this time, and she sits there for about an hour, knitting and waiting. The buses come and go. She never gets on one, and no one ever gets off for her to meet. So the other day, out of curiosity, I took a cup of coffee out and sat with her. She explained that her only son lives a long ways away. She last saw him two years ago when he boarded one of the buses right there. He's now married, and she has never met her daughter-in-law or seen their new child. She said, it helps me to come here and to wait for them. I pray for them as I knit things for the baby, and I imagine them in their tiny apartment saving money to come home. I can't wait to see them. Now the reason the store owner was looking out the window at that particular moment, there was the three of them, the son and his wife and their child getting off the bus and the look on the woman's face when the fa she fell into her son's arms was one of pure joy, his joy matched by her joy. Joy only increased as she looked at her grandchild for the first time. And the store owner simply said, I'll never forget that look as long as I live. And on the next day, the man came back to the same convenience store. He'd been doing some thinking. The owner was again behind the counter, and before the store owner could say or do anything, the customer said, you sent the money to bring that son back here. You bought the bus ticket, didn't you? And the store owner looked back with eyes full of love and a smile and said, yes, I sent the money. And he said what he had said the day before. I will never forget that look as long as I live. My prayer is that you have had the experience of being a, touched by that kind of grace and that kind of love, that kind of outreach and compassion, and that that is part of why you are here, why you are part of what we try to do here. You are a part of recognizing those kinds of needs and opportunities in the world. In this instance of bringing a family back together. That it continues to be a need in this time and place. I'm here because I believe that through this congregation we are able to accomplish that kind of good work. It was in the news the morning, just this morning, pardon me if I preach just a little bit on top of you guys, just in the news this morning, the, the, the David and Margaret home in Laverne, California, will be one of the centers to receive the children who have been detained through the immigration services. And a bell went off in my head, because particularly when I was living in that area, but also working in the bishop's office, the David and Margaret home was very much on our radar because it was founded by the Methodist Church for unwed mothers back in the day. And now it's a significant operation continuing to provide services, enough so that they are able to begin to try and address this current need in this current crisis. This is what we do together, what we can do together, what we are called to do together. And in our council retreat, we were talking about what more can we do? How can this continue to grow and thrive as an engine of compassion, of meeting the needs in the world, of bringing people together, bringing families together, bringing people together in the spirit of God to make right the world that God has made. We know there is the need we know we are broken and cannot do it alone, but together and with the gift of God's Spirit, we can work miracles. Would you pray with me? 
God of mercy, we pray for the church. And for all who have a history with the church, sometimes a struggle, sometimes a delight. We pray for our struggle to be faithful and our failure to sometimes to struggle. O oh God, it is your love and not our opinions that unite us. May we bear the fruits of justice, not judgment. May we let go of being right for being loving, to be at work for the mending of your world. We pray for our hearts to hear your word beneath the roar of our fears. We pray for eyes to see the path of humility, grace and surrender, so often hidden by our pride, our dogma and our domination. We pray for the honesty to confess our greed and our violence, our white supremacy, our complicity with war and with poverty. We pray for your breathing spirit alive and a fire among us, your beating heart among us, your mercy and grace among us, in us and through us. Burdened by the powers and privileges, we cry out for your spirit, awaken us, heal us, set us free. Help us to follow in the way which Jesus showed. Light our structures of fire with your love. Burn our hearts, burn in our hearts, inflame our souls, and free our spirits to live and love outrageously, to heal boldly, to confess and forgive with abandon, to do justice with joy and hope and courage. Make us a people of mercy. Give us faith to die and die nobly, gladly defiant of all that kills us, to rise in your love, to rise with grace, to rise to serve, to serve the lowly and beautiful ones, your secret beloved ones, our brothers and sisters, our strangers, our saviors, our Christ. Bless this, your strange and unwieldy, struggling church, O thou who are the most strange God of love, despite all the brokenness. We ask it in the name of Jesus, that we might be a blessing. Amen. <laughs>
Nancy Wood, Karen Gundelfinger, and uh, Randy Eccles are going to bring a good word for us from our annual conference. Let me give you just a little bit of context so that, uh, that you might know. As a United Methodist congregation, we are brothers and sisters with uh, almost 400 other Methodist congregations just in Southern California, Guam and Saipan, and Hawaii. And beyond that, with the whole of the Methodist Church in the United States and around the world, almost 12 million members. And our structure of connection, our web together, is through, uh, through the conferencing where we meet both as congregations, as regions, and then nationally. So uh, these three are our delegates, our representatives to that annual meeting for our area, Southern California, out in Redlands every year. It's always screaming hot. It's always interesting. It's always filled with uh, wonderful worship, also with business and budgets and stuff like that. So I'm grateful that they have offered themselves uh, to take the time and be out there for almost four days and participate in all of that and bring our voice into the greater chorus of the whole of the church. So I invite you to uh, receive their testimony about being at annual conference. Nancy, thank you for thank leaving. You. I'd like to start by saying thank you. Thank you for sending me to annual conference as one of your three voting laypersons. It was truly a spiritual experience. I was inspired. And I look forward to returning in 2019. And I offer you the invitation that if you ever have the chance to go, go. Go to some of the, the um, services, you'll, you'll really be inspired. I was also inspired by the presence of the Holy Spirit. It was, you would think, well, sure, obviously the Holy Spirit's there, but you know, sometimes you just don't connect. Well, from the time I walked into the chapel, I was like in awe. I could feel the Holy Spirit. I could see the Holy Spirit in people's faces and how they were interacting with each other. In the meeting rooms, people were very cordial. There, were, there was nothing that, but, but love, and I really appreciated that. And of course, the Redlands University campus is so well manicured. I felt the Holy Spirit there. Another way I was inspired is we have the best of the best when it comes to the people that they invite to preach to us on the different evenings. And I was really inspi inspired by the service led by the Hawaiians and the Tongans. They are the most enthusiastic people for Jesus Christ. Their faces shine. They just reach out to you. Their spirit reaches out to you. And they share their love of God through their native dress, their native tongue, the, their songs and their dancing. And if you've never been in a large chapel like the one at Redlands, when a large group of these men start singing in their native tongues, it just, it lifts you. You think you're on your way to heaven, I think. <laughs> it is just, just so gorgeous. They are so on fire for Jesus. I had fun there, too. Meeting new people was great. But one of the most memorable things was pastors that had pastored churches uh, before I met John and that are now retired. It was such a surprise to see some of them there and to talk to them. And then to see other lay members, lay persons from those churches, and share with them uh, about the people in those churches, the ones that I remember, they caught me up to date. That was so much fun. In fact, uh, Randy labeled me the social butterfly because I think I didn't sit still for very long because I was wanting to talk to everyone. It was a blessing to be there and to room with a friend from a past church. To be across, now this may sound silly to some of you, but some of you will get it. To be across the hall from the bathroom. So in the, in the middle of the night, it was a short trip. To leave the cooking to others for four days. What a joy that was. And the food there is very nutritious with lots of fresh vegetables and fruits and things that are healthy. The ride to conference was great. Randy drove. I didn't have to drive. So, so many things that I was, I found a to be a blessing. At annual conference, each district 
meets uh, one morning together for breakfast. So the morning that our, our uh, district met, our DS asked us something that I have been pondering ever since. He said, what is your personal roadblock in taking the next step in your personal growth and the growth of your church? Your personal roadblock. Well, after pondering that for a while, I realized it can be my agenda, what I think needs to happen or how I think something needs to happen. So that is something I will continue to pray about and ponder. One of our incredible speakers um, at, at one of the services told us to never forget your first calling to be a follower of Jesus Christ. It will take your whole life to figure that calling out, he said. Well, you know what? He normalized me. I felt so much better after he said that because I'm always thinking at my age I should have it figured out. I should know what to, to do, what to say, you know. Some of you may have, have those feelings too, but no, he says, it's going to take your whole life to figure it out. He also said, to be a full-bodied Christian, we must pray and act. It is necessary to do both, even if we're better at one of the things than the other. And I know there are people in this church that are really, really wonderful prayers and actors, and, and, and in their actions, they show that love of God, and I am so thankful for them every time I'm around them. And lastly, uh, my granddaughter, Charlotte, was watching Mary Poppins, and it all of a sudden reminded me that sometimes change is needed. If you remember the movie, the Banks family had a lot going on, and the children were in desperate need of mom and dad's attention. And along comes Bert the chimney sweep, and he notices that the wind is changing. And he proclaims that change is coming. And of course, he knows that means Mary Poppins is coming to help. Well, I want to be a part of that change. I want to be a part of it at the conference level, but more than that, here in our community and in our church. I want to lay aside my agenda and be open to spirit calling. I want to feel those nudges of spirit. And then when I feel them, I want to pray about them. So I send up a cheer for annual conference for our church and our community. And I pray continually that my ears will be open, my eyes will be open, and that I will see and hear what I need to see and hear. And once again, I thank you for trusting me at annual conference with your vote. I want to thank Nancy. Um, a lot of the things that she has said, I am certain that um, it will sound repetitious in my notes. Um, and I have not heard Karen at all, but I suspect that you'll hear a lot of mirroring going on. And keep in mind, we did not sit and discuss our notes so that we would sound in some sort of level of community. I think this is just what you get when you're there. So without further ado, let me continue here. First, let me say that being a voting delegate representing our church, CUMC, at the California Pacific Conference for the last two years has been an outstanding, awe-inspiring experience and an honor, to be sure. I drew inspiration from every aspect of the well-planned and orchestrated schedule to include the various ceremonies, the daily workshop services, including plenty of singing, the uh, workshops themselves, the presentation of the important issues that needed to be discussed, and in many cases voted on by the body. That is the laity, that be us. As a voting delegate, I took this part of the conference very seriously. I felt the weight of my responsibility and prayed constantly over the votes I would be casting. It's exhausting and at times overwhelming, but the camaraderie amongst the attendees is a very special thing. It's especially gratifying and humbling 
when after a spirited debate over an important issue and when voted on did not always go my way. People after that, the people that you're surrounding yourselves with, you stand up, you're not sure how you should feel, how you do feel, and I found the level of, of civility was equally as high as it had been before we, the spirited conversation and the, the final votes. And I have to say, I felt the presence of the Spirit of God at that moment. During one of the afternoon ceremonies, we were blessed to have, I believe, the contingent from Hawaii, and as Nancy said, I think there were also some Tungans there. Or is that one and the same? I'm not sure. Um, and it was, um, they were singing a choral selection that accompanied the procession of the clergy after a major ceremony um, as they walked off of the stage. The quality and volume of their voice, the pitches, and the harmony was some of the most powerful and beautiful I have ever heard. It literally, as Nancy pointed out, raised the roof on this mighty chapel. It was just absolutely phenomenal. And if you don't think that that didn't resonate through your spirit, it does. Lastly, on, my, on more than one occasion as I was walking from venue to venue, and you have plenty of time to think because the venues are not always very close to each other, and it is warm at times, um, I felt, it, excuse me, just one second with me. I noted how different I felt in this place with these people whom I knew so few. How easy and safe and secure I felt with these people in this place serving this very honorable purpose. Thank you. God bless. So this was my second time at annual conference. And this year, I felt like I started to get my stride. I, I have to admit that last year, I kind of walked around in a fog. It was overwhelming. And I felt kind of like a fish out of water. Needless to say, I didn't retain very much from that first conference. This time, though, it was more clear to me that we delegates do important work at the annual conference, and we still have so much more to do. So what do we do at annual conference? You've kind of heard from, from Nancy and Randy, but I have, we worship with our fellow Methodists, and we meet people not only from California, but from Hawaii, Guam, Tonga, and other Pacific Island territories. We attend workshops, which we hope will help us to create a broader outreach in our communities, most especially with our younger generations. We attend plenary and legislative sessions where we vote on matters pertaining to the ongoing human rights issues in the Philippines, designating landmark churches, and even the salaries and pensions of our clergy and support staff. And that's just a few of, of those types of sessions we attend. But one of the things that truly stood out for me from this year's conference was the ordination service. It is such a beautiful, spiritual, and moving celebration. The music was wonderful, and the homily given by Bishop Palmer was powerful. And I have to say, I will not forget this experience for quite some time. Also, I was particularly, in particularly inspired by the speeches given by those who spoke about the LGBTQI community and how we, as not only Methodists, but Christians, are united to God and one another. Though we are many with such diverse, view, diverse views and backgrounds, we are called to respond with love to all humankind, to accept all those who enter the doors of our churches. I found these same speeches to be a challenge for me personally as well. While we did not vote on this particular issue, we know that this still divides the United Methodist Church. I am troubled that I do not know what to do to help bridge that divide. Yet I hope that one day we will soon have a unified church which welcomes gay marriages and ordinations of those from the LGBTQI community. I also realized how wide our differences are when it comes to topics such as human rights, the LGBTQI community, and even the interpretation of the Book of Discipline. As you know, 
Redlands is quite hot in June, and not everyone is a friend of the heat, including me. One item that we did vote on that did not pass was changing the long-standing location at the University of Redlands to San Diego beginning in 2019. Even though the proposal to move the location of the conference, again, did not pass, I am looking forward to going back to the heat of Redlands to hear and learn more about how we can help our denomination effectively exude God's grace, love, peace, and justice for all in all we do. Thanks. <clears throat> My thanks to all, all of you for sharing so ably. Um, we had one, we're eligible and elected one other delegate, Taylor Binney is a young adult. Uh, however, her uh, combination of school and summer work schedule prevented her from participating. Um, but this is, a, this is a part of how we, again, are woven into the church. I would just flag to your attention that uh, a couple things. Uh, um, we all felt power strongly about the ordination service and uh, Bishop Palmer's preaching. In fact, for our retreat this weekend, we watched that on video as, a, as the leadership of the church, and our consensus was to, to maybe put that on the schedule and literally have us in Sunday morning worship uh, hear that word. And so that's on the horizon for us. It was, for me, um, an interesting session. Technically, it was the 30th anniversary of my elders' ordination, and so there was uh, feelings associated with that and old friends uh, to see there. Uh, there was the retirement service as a part of the uh, order of worship, as well as the memorial service, and we remember those who had passed. And so I would call to your attention that two of the names that were lifted up during that memorial service were Reverend Ed Galen, who was previously a pastor here in this congregation, whose daughter just visited here just a, a, a couple months ago and told some fun stories about living over in Mission House when it was still the parsonage, as well as uh, Bobby McMullen's uh, husband, John, was also remembered as a part in that memorial service. So this is a part of our broader family. Uh, the whole of the church of which we are a part. Uh, so when we are worshiping here, we're worshiping with all of those who are gathered uh, in this name. In this act of communion, we break bread and pour the cup out. Jesus did these signs as a symbolism for the brokenness of both God's breaking God's self into the world, for Christ breaking himself into humanity and incarnation, and a symbol of our brokenness, yet all of this comes from wholeness and God calls back together in wholeness. And so Jesus took what was a familiar ritual with his disciples and within his faith tradition, made it new to symbolize how God is calling us together in grace in spite of our brokenness, that we are meant to be one and to be one family. So Would you join with me in prayer? Gracious God, we ask your blessings upon this fruit of the vine and the fruit of the earth, broken and poured out for all your children in every place and in every need. Bind us together as one in these symbols that we might know your grace, your compassion, and your justice. It is in Christ's name we pray, who taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The bread of the world, broken for the world. cup of grace, poured out for you and for many. Come, the feast is spread.
Thank you for making this a special place and a special time of grace and peace. We invite you to continue the fellowship. Come on over to Brooks Patio, join in some coffee and refreshments. And our adult discussion class is following. We'll be talking about the news of the week, that's for sure, and what we can do about it. I do need to ask for a couple of hands. We want to clear this out so our Korean brothers and sisters can worship here shortly. Uh, we appreciate you being a part of all of this. And so, may you know the peace of Christ. Go with the peace of Christ in your hearts. May you go with the work of Christ in your hands. In his name we pray. Amen.